In this video I'm going to show you how to connect uh, a magnetic switch door switch to the ESP8266 Mini or the D1 as it's often called. Uh, it has 4 megabyte flash memory, 11 GPIOs and 1 ADC pin and you can uh, get it all over the net for about three and a half dollar. But I bought mine uh, uh, at Banggood for 671. Um, I also bought the switch from uh, Banggood. So I will show you uh, that uh, when the door switch uh, opens, you will get an SMS that the door is open. So here you see the ASP8266 Mini. It's very small but uh, powerful with built-in Wi-Fi and enough GPIOs and unlock for our project. Here you see the the big brother with uh, which is more powerful and with more pins but for our project uh, the mini one is enough. So when you get it you have to solder on the pins so I like to put it on a small breadboard and put the Put the D1 on top of it and soldier it that way it's a little bit easier to do so I recommend that you do the same. Here you see the GPIO pins 5 volts, 3 volts, send and receive, reset and analog pin and the other serial pins. Here you see the magnetic switch, door switch, I have soldered on some two wires to make it easier to plug it into the breadboard and the magnetic switch works like this when the magnetic is on the flow between the two pins is <coughs> running but uh, when you remove the magnet uh, you lose connection and uh, the flow stops between the two pins first I will have to connect the black pin to the ground pin of the D1 on the breadboard and the yellow pin to D1 pin. When I put on the power the program starts to connect to Wi-Fi while the built-in LED is on and when the LED goes out it has connection so I'll just move the phone closer, remove the magnet from the switch and then I get SMS that the main door is open. Uh, as we see when I click here finish with alert and uh, now we can look at the code. So to begin with we need to uh, connect our D1 to our PC via the USB cable. So I will use Windows in parallel share because I have already installed it for my Mac. So if I will uh, plug in the ESP8266 Mini it pops up here with um, USB serial CH340, that's the chip that is used uh, for serial communication. So uh, it comes right away here, but usually you would need to uh, install the driver for... Uh, you can find many pages that shows you how to install the the serial driver for Windows and for Mac, but the uh, most important is to have the CH340 uh, driver ready. When we start the Arduino after download, we only have the standard boards that comes with the Arduino IDE installed. So we need to uh, add the uh, JSON file that specifies the ESP8266 boards. So we copy this path here. You see the web page, you can Google this also. And um, go to uh, File and Preferences and Additional Board Manager URL. And we paste it in here and say OK. And then it will download all the specifications for our boards. Next thing to do is to go to the board manager and here we can search for the 8266 and boards include the package and here you see all the boards that uh, are included in the 
package. So we just select the newest version and install. When everything is installed, you can go to tools and boards and then suddenly you will see all the ESP boards that was installed with this package. I will just use this one that supports uh, different versions of uh, D1. So the next thing to do is to test our uh, our installation so we will go, go to file examples and the famous blink so we will uh, just blink the the built-in led so uh, we set the built-in led as an output and uh, write to it and wait one second so uh, low is to turn the led on high is to turn it off so it's a standard uh, exercise. So I will select the, the D1, R2 and Mini board. So I will select the port COM3 because uh, that's the port that the CH340 was installed on. And uh, I can increase the speed, upload speed to maximum. And I will uh, upload it to uh, the D1, see what happens. It looks like everything is downloading to the chip correctly and uh, if we look at the chip we see that the built-in LED is now blinking as it was supposed to do. If you add uh, .h file to your folder um, you will get uh, files that you can include in your sketch to uh, include the credentials that you don't want to expose to uh, the public or uh, github account so if we start looking at the code first we include the header file for the wi-fi and header file for the http client and then we have the credential file here which include our credentials here in the demo i will show you the demo file uh, we have uh, Wi-Fi SSID with your Wi-Fi name and password and you can see that in only 40 lines of code uh, we do most of the work. Uh, we have the switch pin D1. We have one uh, global variable that uh, says has sent message so we don't get 100 messages when the door is open. Uh, in the setup routine, we start with uh, setting up the serial port with the default serial on the D1. We set the built-in LED to output and we set the switch to input pull-up. That's uh, very important because then it listens to the pull-up of the pin. Uh, then we call a connect Wi-Fi, which is here. We set the Wi-Fi to uh, station mode, specify the SSID and password, and we print connecting, and while we are waiting for connection, we pin print out the dot and wait for half a second. And then we are connected, we print out the, our IP, and we uh, turn off the LED. Then in the loop, we read the, the, the digital read the switch pin, and when it is high, we know that uh, the door is open. So we uh, turn on the LED, we print out door is open, and if we didn't send the message yet, we will send it from here. Uh, if it is low, the pin, we will just say that the door is closed, and we put the, the Boolean variable to false, and then we will just uh, Switch the digital LED built-in uh, here and delay for one second. So we can see how this code works. So we will start the sketch. And here we see the output of the serial port. It's trying to connect to the 
Wi-Fi, now it gets an IP address and the door is closed. And we move the magnetic away. It is open, sends an SMS. Put again here and it's closed. And now for the SMS, I went to the Plevo service, which is uh, very easy to use and cheap. So you have just have to sign up for a uh, account and uh, when you log in you uh, get your dashboard. Next thing to do is to uh, buy a phone number. You can uh, buy a very cheap phone number in the US for about uh, 0 0.8 dollars with free SMS and that's what I did. Plevo has very easy to use um, REST API so if you want to send an SMS you just have to uh, post the message to uh, this URL with your auth ID here and these fields are mandatory source destination and text and then you have optional field also but we are only using these three for all your uh, messages you need to uh, send the auth token so which is based on your auth id and auth token so so um, you use that as an username and password and to create that token we can uh, use a website like this one which just takes uh, username and password so if we look at the demo we can take uh, auth id from here and put it as a username and the password will be the auth id token so then you will generate this um, authorization that you need to send with a post message and we will just take this one and um, copy paste it into our uh, credential file so now we have our auth token we are ready to uh, send our sms so here is the send message routine we just print out send the message we uh, create an instance of http client and we start with the https to our uh, plevo account we put the auth id that is uh, defined in our header file and slash message and then we need to put in fingerprint because we are using https and this uh, is a rather primitive library that we are using so we need to put the fingerprint of the https path or the site so uh, that we can get from here so if you run this command which is an open ssl as client connect to the api plevo.com on port 443 and we um, pipe that into openssl 509 and get the fingerprint so uh, basically if you run this command we get the fingerprint like this so if they change their certificate we need to run this command again but that's not a thing that happens every day so we'll just copy this fingerprint and we paste it into our header file as a fingerprint with uh, columns and then um, we have the fingerprint in the begin http begin statement we add two headers we add the content type should be application json and the authorization token that we just created comes here and then the message that we will post is uh, um, and JSON format so we have to use the backslash for the quotes here so we have a source telephone number we have a destination telephone number and we have a text which is the main door is open and then we just print out the post message and we do the post command here if something goes wrong we will get the error message otherwise we will just uh, end the uh, the HTTP uh, command and put has sent message to true so we will uh, run our sketch for the last time it uh, compiles and uploads 
to the D1. And uh, now we see that it's running. So we will just remove the magnet, uh, get our SMS, and uh, then our project is finished. Thanks.